everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sierra and today I'm going to be sharing my very first wedding series video with you other than our engagement video. Um, this video is all about us venue shopping and all that good stuff and by the end of this video I'm going to tell you which one we picked. We toured four different ones um, and I'm going to kind of just go through the pros and cons just because it's interesting to me to see all the different um, aspects of each venue and stuff especially going to see them in person so I've filmed a couple videos from when we went to look but during all those videos the venue owner was talking so I didn't get to like put in my two cents or whatever um, in those videos so that's what I'm gonna do here and just kind of overlay those videos over me talking and all that good stuff so without further ado I will get started on the first one so the first one that we viewed was called Hallelujah Arena Venue um, it was in not really the mountains but it did have mountain views um, it's a big huge metal building as you can see, the sheer is kind of draped. Um, this is where the reception would be, and it holds, I think, 300 people is what she said. Um, up to 300 people, I think. Um, so that's plenty for what we need because we're only estimating at most 150, I believe. Um, so that would be plenty of room. Um, there's heaters and um, air conditioning, fans, all that good stuff, depending on what the weather is because it is technically still outside. Um, one thing we were questioning was whether or not if it rained, if we would be able to, you know, keep from getting wet and stuff. So, um, they do have like shades and stuff that come down. So if the sun is beating in too much or if it gets a little windy, we can always put those down, um, to kind of keep away from the elements a little bit better. The ceremony site is about a football field away from where the reception is. And it's just like a big open field on, on the mountain. Um, and on each side you can see the mountains. Obviously in this video you can't see it very well because when we went there was a hurricane about to come through and it was super foggy but she said that whenever the fog isn't there that you can see the mountains on both sides and that the sun sets behind where we would actually be standing for the altar or whatever. Um, and then I've seen pictures of it online when it was sunny and it is absolutely beautiful. There are just mountains and whatever. So you have the mountain feel but it's a little bit closer to home to us than the actual mountains. Um, so that was nice. I really like that, especially because I do want to get married outside and I don't want to just, you know, get married in a field. Like I want it to have pretty views and stuff for the pictures and all that good stuff. So that was a nice little touch. Um, next is the bridal suite and the groom suite. So they were both very nice, um, very spacious in my opinion. Um, I'm planning on having five bridesmaids plus myself and my mom. So we'll all have to fit in there and, you know, girls, we have a ton of stuff. And I really liked how there was the mirrors with the chairs, like the vanities. Um, so we could all sit there and get ready if we wanted to do our own makeup or just for pictures or whatever. And then there's also a bathroom connected to it. And I just love the chandelier. So I took a video of that. Um, the door to the bathroom actually closes off so that people can use it during the reception or before the ceremony. Um, without being in the room that we got ready in so it's also handicap accessible which was very important to me because my poppy is in a wheelchair and I mean if he needs to go to the restroom it needs to be easy for him to get there so that was a big plus for me um, another thing with the handicap accessible thing they had a golf cart to transport you know elderly people or handicapped people whichever to and from the ceremony site because it is in the grass so that is a little bit more difficult for someone in a wheelchair but we can always load his wheelchair up onto the golf cart and then put him in the golf cart which would be no problem for him so that would make it really easy for him to get there the groom's suite i guess you would say i don't really know if there's a room or a name for that but um it was cool it had a couch a mini fridge and then it had darts and like a little bar top thing so that was pretty cool um, just to keep them occupied. Obviously, they're guys. They're not going to be in there very long, but if they wanted just somewhere to hang out, that would be really awesome, too, for them just to chill, hang out, watch TV, play darts, have a couple drinks, whatever the case may be while they're waiting for the ceremony to start. So, I really like that there was a space for the, the guys and the girls to get ready and just hang out. That was separate. Um, from everything else, closed off from everything else. This venue also offered a ton of decorations in our cost. Um, so that was nice. Um, she had three rooms full of decorations. There was lanterns, um, wine bottles, um, signs of all kinds, which was really nice because before we went to tour, I didn't know that they offered that. And me and my mom had already kind of talked about some of the decorations I was going to want and some of the signs that I was going to want her to make for me and stuff like that. And when we got there, they already had a ton of the things that I knew that I wanted, like a honeymoon fund box and then um, some signs to go at the ceremony talking about how we're unplugged and we don't want people to have their phones out or anything like that because we do pay a lot of money for a photographer. 
Um, so that was nice because my mom won't have to make those. They're already there. We don't have to worry about making them or selling them after or figuring out where to store them in the meantime. So that was really nice. Um, this place also had a full kitchen. So we are planning to do the food ourselves. We have a family friend that's going to hopefully do all the food for us. Um, so we're not having it catered. So um, this place had a big, huge fridge and a big warmer and, you know, countertops and stuff like that. Um, and they were very open about, you know, what vendors could come. They didn't really ha care as long as, you know, they were respectful and, you know, they didn't make a mess kind of thing. Um, and then with the alcohol, they obviously had to have a licensed and insured bartender for that. But that's pretty much anywhere around where we live. Um, so overall, I really liked this place, but it was the first place that we visited. So I wanted to make sure that I tried some other places too, just to make sure I didn't count anything out. And I did want to visit some that were actually in the mountains, um, like in the Boone area near where we got engaged. So I really liked this one. And, you know, obviously it was definitely in the top because that was the only one I had seen, but I wanted to make sure that I checked out some other ones just to make sure. So I will show you those next. We took about a week in between seeing them just because that's how it fit our schedules. Um, but we saw these next two one week, the weekend after we viewed this, the first one I just showed you. The next one we viewed was called The Summit on Cross Mountain. It was in West Jefferson, North Carolina um, in the mountains. And I had only seen pictures on their website, which wasn't really very done because I could tell by their website that they were a very new venue, but I didn't really know how new. Um, but it had a beautiful view of the mountains as you can see here and I really I really love that view obviously for picture purposes and you know just for the view in itself just being able to have something to look at that was so beautiful during our ceremony and after if you're taking a break outside or whatever the case may be but unfortunately these are the only couple of videos that I got because once we got there we realized that the venue is actually not completed um, so really the only space that they had was where I showed you with the beautiful view for the ceremony and then inside this area right here was for the reception and as soon as we pulled up I kind of knew to myself that that space was not going to be big enough for as many people as we are planning to attend. You know, always, my mom made the comment, you know, always plan for more and then if you have less then that's fine but we didn't want to plan for only 100 and then have... 170 because this venue only held 150 people max and even with that number I think it was going to be very very cramped in there especially once you got the DJ table and all the tables for the food and little um, guest book and all that kind of stuff everyone was going to be very very cramped and that's like my biggest pet peeve at weddings um, that was the one thing I wanted to make sure of that there was plenty of room for everyone to sit you wouldn't be backing out of your table and bumping into someone else plenty of room to walk through um, just to avoid, you know, chaos because it's just irritating when you have to wait for someone or when someone's bumping into you while you're trying to eat. I absolutely hate that. So I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of room for everyone to sit, everyone to dance, hang out, socialize, all that good stuff. So as soon as we got there, I knew that it wasn't going to be big enough, but I still wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt just to see what they had to offer. Um, but unfortunately, they didn't have anything else finished. They kind of told us what their plans were, but they also mentioned that... There was one thing that kind of was planned already, but it fell through because of COVID. Um, they couldn't get their permits, so it didn't get finished in time. It was supposed to be finished in August, and it is now November, and it was not yet finished. So that added a little bit of stress. I was like, I know if I book this place and in, in hopes that it's finished, and then it ends up not getting finished, that's really going to stress me out and make me very upset because who wants an unfinished venue? Um, they did not currently have anywhere for anyone to get ready. They only had one bathroom. Um, they didn't have a kitchen or anything like that, which is very important when you're not getting food catered. When you're making it yourself, you need to have room to set everything out. You need to have somewhere to keep it, keep the cold food cold and the warm food warm. And all they had was like a fridge, I think it was. And it was, it was bigger than like a normal kitchen fridge, but it wasn't huge. It was definitely, I don't think, going to be big enough for all the things that we're planning on having at our reception. Um, and drinks and all that good stuff. So for those reasons, I didn't really like it. And for the main reason was it wasn't going to be big enough. So even if it does get finished by the time we want to get married, which is in about a year, um, there just wasn't going to be enough room for the people that we're planning to attend. And again, I would rather just plan for more and then not need that space than to need all that space and not have it. That one I wasn't really that huge of a fan of just for those reasons. So then after that, we went to another venue. It was about... 30 minutes from the one in West Jefferson. It was called, I want to say it was called Wanderlust Acres, I believe. 
And let me just tell y'all, this one kind of was an automatic turn off when we got there just because we had no phone service. So our GPS stopped working and we were kind of just guessing as to where we could go. And it was, you know, mountain roads, all gravel, super curvy, no signs or anything like that. So we got lost a couple times trying to get in there. So um, this one might be out just on the fact that we don't know how the heck to get there. We are currently in someone's driveway, oh, we think. And we have to back down the mountain, or whatever you want to call this. This is not going as planned. This is going to be fantastic. My mom is nervous. I'm very scared. She doesn't have a backup camera, so... Uh, I have an old vehicle. Is there a mountain I'm going to fall off of my backup right there? Uh, no, you're good. It's just a lot of weeds. So that was kind of like a turn off, but once we actually got there, it was a beautiful place. Um, as you can see, there are a couple little ponds, um, and then there's like a barn, and there's a little cottage type thing on the property. Um, a fire pit, things like that, all the outdoorsy things. Um, the inside of this venue was very nice, but again, I don't think it was going to be big enough. Um, the tables were kind of built in, even though you could remove them. She said that the tables that were already there only held 12 people per table and there were six of them up so that's about 76 people and that's about half of what we needed and that was definitely not going to be enough because even if some of the people that we don't think will come end up not coming we think more than 50 percent of what we invite are going to be there that's just kind of a given at least we hope um so that wasn't going to be big enough and then she told us that if we planned on having more than that that was fine of course they said that they're um, max capacity I believe was like 200 and something even though it did not look to me like it would fit that many um, but they told us if we plan on having more than that 76 amount um, th they could take those wooden tables out but we would have to rent tables and chairs per person um, and that was just going to end up being a lot more money and the venue was already a little bit out of not out of our price range but a little expensive for them to not even have enough chairs for us she also mentioned that they did not have enough chairs for if we wanted to do the ceremony outside that we would have to put all the chairs out ourselves and that they did not have enough chairs to have them at the ceremony and the reception place at the same time so she kind of like made a joke about how oh well you can just have your guests carry their chair from where they want to sit at the reception to the ceremony and while that was maybe just a joke, to me, I would not want to do that if I was a guest at a wedding. So I would not want my guests to have to do that for me. Um, I kind of think that's a little tacky, honestly. Um, I don't really like that. I think that they should have enough chairs for their max capacity, in my opinion. Um, and then they didn't have a kitchen either. All they had was like a normal fridge and then like a sink. And the bar for serving was very small. Um, and like I said, we plan on having probably 150 people, so we're going to need at least, you know, a pretty large table to hold all that so that people can go down both sides of the table for like a buffet style and not take forever to get their food um, because that would irritate me too. And there's a bug. There's a bug somewhere. Eh. Anyways, um, and then their rooms to get ready in were very small as well. Um, for the guys, it might not have been that big of an issue because like I said before, they're not going to be in there a whole lot. But for us girls, we have a lot of stuff, and that's probably where we're going to be spending most of our day. So, to me, that just wasn't going to work. Um, it just wasn't big enough. And I was also kind of scared that since there was so much stuff around, like, the lake or the ponds and stuff, if someone were to, by chance, like, take their eye off their kid, you never know where that kid's going to run to. You never know if someone's going to drink too much and end up in the pond. Like, you just never know. It's just a lot of space to have to watch. And even though we could designate that job to someone else, I don't want anyone to be responsible for that. Especially, and with me and my anxiety, I just know that I'd be worried about it the whole time. So I just kind of figured that that wasn't the best option. Um, and also there was a lot of gravel around and the whole thing with my papa being in a wheelchair, that's not really very handicap accessible at all for him. Um, it's kind of impossible to push a wheelchair and gravel actually. So um, for multiple reasons um that was it she kind of mentioned that they just gave us the space and that we kind of had to do everything else um we had to basically leave it exactly how we found it which is fine but if i'm paying all this money then the least you could do is take the trash for us but that wasn't even a, an option they told us that we would have to remove the trash from the premises and take it to the dump which was probably 15 to 20 minutes away and this venue was an hour and a half from my house so that's just like an extra thing that we would have to worry about doing after spending all day we're going to be tired. We're, that's like one less thing I want to work. Like one thing I don't want to have to worry about. Even though it may not seem like that big of a deal to some people. 
Um, it's just not something that I want to have to worry about or have to have my parents worry about or anything like that. So, um, even though I was really excited about those two in the mountains, um, once we toured them and kind of got more details, I just realized that they really weren't for me. Um, it was going to be a lot more stress than I wanted it to be and honestly a lot more cost that we didn't have to have, especially compared to the first venue that we saw. So, my mom actually found, um this place about 15 minutes from our house um, that she wanted me to go see and it was very similar to the one that we saw first um, so we went and looked at that one and the inside of it was beautiful uh, it was basically like the same as the first one it was just a big building with like the sheer hanging up except this one did have doors and it was made out of wood instead of metal um, so it did have doors so you could actually close the doors if it were to rain super hard or be super cold or super hot either way um, and they did have heating and air, so um, depending on the weather, they could have that going. Um, it was a very large space. I think they said 300 was their max as well, or something close to that. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so then we went into the bridal suite, I guess is what you would call it. And it is just off of where the reception would be. Um, one thing I didn't like about this is it was a little small. She told us that they had like seven girls in there the weekend before that, but... There wasn't a whole lot of space for us to put our things on it. Um, so like makeup and hair stuff and all the stuff that we're going to have sprawled out everywhere. There wasn't a whole lot of space for us to put stuff like that. And again, like I said before, I want us to be able to relax and not have to worry about everybody's stuff getting mixed up or not having room or anything like that. And another thing was it was very dark in there and I don't want like, obviously you can get, you know, the vanity lights and things like the ring lights, whatever. But I don't want to have to worry. That's one extra thing I'm going to have to worry about taking. I would rather just have like natural lights or um, the LED lights already installed. Just so that, you know, we can get a smooth look on our makeup. All that good stuff. And it will be great for pictures. We won't have to worry too much about the lighting for pictures. Whether for my photographer or just stuff that we're taking on our phone either way. Um, so I didn't really like that. But it wasn't like something that I was like absolutely not. We cannot get this venue because of this bridal suite being too dark and too small. Um, so... Then she took us out to the outdoor part, which is where I would choose to get married was outside, weather permitting. It was just like a little, not field, but just a grassy area right next to where the reception was. Um, so the DJ wouldn't have to move or set up another um, little sound thing or anything like that. He could just stay where he was and just turn the speakers. Um, and then it had like a little arbor and there was a horse pasture behind it. And she said that usually whenever they have weddings, the horses will come up. Which I thought was very fitting because um, as some of you may or may not know, Jonathan spent a good bit of time out in Wyoming. Being a hunting guide, worked with horses all the time. Um, so he would love that, I know. Um, there was also a covered like, um, not gazebo, but just a little covered area with tables and chairs. Um, it also had a fireplace, so if guests wanted to come outside during the reception or whatever. And she said we could also use it as our ceremony space if we wanted. Um, personally, I don't think I would choose to do it under there. But that was an option. Um, and then there was a little bridge and a little creek type thing next to where the ceremony would be. And over the little bridge was a little cabin type thing. It was very small, just a, a bed and a bathroom and then like a dresser and a couple mirrors. Um, that would be where either the grooms would get ready or if we switched where the girls would get ready, the girls would get ready in there and the guys would get ready in the other room that was attached to the reception hall. Um, it was also not that big, so even if we did switch areas to get ready, I still don't think that we would have quite enough room for us. Um, we could probably make it work, but again, I just didn't really want to stress about that. Um, but this place did have so many photo op areas, um, like the little bridge, the house porch, um, the horse pasture, the creek, all kinds of photo opportunities. Um, and then she also did provide a couple decorations like mason jars. Um, she had wood stained pieces that we could use for the centerpieces. Um, she had tablecloths, all that good stuff. Um, not nearly as many as the first one, but she did have a, a little bit of selection for that. Um, and then those people also did everything for us. So set up the tables. Um, moved the chairs from ceremony to reception or whatever we needed to do for that. Made sure that the bathrooms were clean, the trash was taken out, all that good stuff. So we wouldn't have to worry about cleaning. 
Um, she even mentioned that if we needed her to decorate for us, if we would tell her what we wanted, that she would make it happen. That would be one less thing we would have to worry about. Although, me and my mom do want to decorate ourselves just because we love to do that stuff. My mom's a very crafty person, and I love to decorate. So, I, we would want to do that ourselves, but we wouldn't. We didn't have to if we didn't want to. So, that was nice. Um, this was also pretty handicap accessible because, like I said, the... The floor was just concrete and then there was grass so um and they were right next to each other so that wouldn't have been a big deal um so i did really like this one the only problem with that other than the rooms to get ready and being a little small is that the table price was not included so we actually had to rent tables from them at fifty dollars a table which you know if you were only having a 50 person wedding that wouldn't be too much but since we are planning on having so many people um, it was going to be about $1,000 extra for just the tables, and that kind of didn't seem worth it to me. Um, also, we have a lot of guests that we're inviting that are from out of town, because Jonathan's family, a lot of them are from Maryland. Um, a lot of my friends from college, n none of them live here. Um, so we do have several people we're inviting that are coming out from out of town, and even if, you know, a majority of them don't come, I still want them to have the option to come and not be worried about having somewhere to stay. Um, and so this last one that I just showed didn't have um, any hotels or anything like that close by. Um, so that was kind of a downfall. So we actually ended up picking and booking the very first venue that we toured, Hallelujah Arena. Um, just because, you know, it out of all of them it was the cheapest and no that's not the most important. But we did feel like for the cheapest price we were getting way more for our money than we would have been at any of the other three. Um, we have a huge, huge reception hall that I know will fit everyone comfortably, no matter how many people we have. Um, the ceremony space is beautiful. There's mountains in the background, so that still gives us the mountain feel that we wanted. Um, the rooms to get ready in are in great size. They have great lighting, things like that. Things that some people may not think are that important, like the good lighting. But to me, that's super important, especially for pictures and for girls putting on their makeup. You want to be able to see what you're doing. Um, so that was very nice. And then... Most of all, just the fact that there were so many decorations to choose from that we would not have to transport there, um, transport home, figure out what to do with after. Um, kind of just up to us to use them whenever. Um, the vendor flexibility was really nice. She basically was like, we don't care. We just need their information to put it, you know, in our insurance, um, which is totally understandable. Again, there they do all the work for us. So they put out all the tables however I want them, put out all the chairs at the reception, they take out the trash, they do all that stuff. Um, they put up the heaters and everything. So we wouldn't have to worry about anything like that. Um, so that was really nice. Um, and also there are several, several hotels right near that. So any guests that we had from out of town would be able to stay within 10 minutes of where we're getting married. Um, so it wouldn't be a huge trip for them, which I really liked because I like to think if I was in their shoes, what would I want as a guest? So, as a guest, especially coming from out of town, I don't want to be, I don't want to have to stay somewhere that's 45 minutes to your venue. I want to be right there. Um, I want to be able to, you know, get there quickly, especially if I'm traveling all day to get there and I'm going to need to stay the weekend. I want it to be close. Um, so, that was a big thing. And then another big thing for me was the handicap accessible thing. Um, the golf cart really did it for me because I just, I want, I want my family to be comfortable and I know that they would do anything for me. They would do anything to make my wedding day perfect for me. Um, but I don't want to make it more difficult on them than I have to. So being able to just, you know, put his stuff on the golf cart as well as him and just take him down to the ceremony site instead of having to worry about pushing a wheelchair all that way, that makes me feel at ease because I know that he'll still be comfortable and he'll still get to enjoy it. He won't feel like a burden to anyone or anything like that. So that's really nice for me. Um, and then again, just the huge space for everyone to get ready, huge space for the reception and it was just so many good things and the owner there was fantastic. I loved her from the moment that we started talking to her. She was just so easy to get along with and very informative. I didn't really have to ask too many questions because she just kind of gave us all the information that we would ever possibly need and even more than that, honestly. So she was awesome. She's been awesome ever since I've been talking to her about signing the contract and paying our deposit and all that good stuff. Um, seems like she'll be very easy to work with, which I think will be very important, especially closer to time. Um, you don't want someone that's going to make your day more stressful and she's so funny and I already love her so much. So I could not be happier with our choice. Um, I think our family and friends are going to love it. Um, I love it. Jonathan loves it. It is beautiful and I think that we are going to be able to make it even more beautiful than it already is with all of our little special touches and things like that. 
So I'm very excited. I'm super excited for our venue and everything that came along with it. I'm super excited to work with all of our other vendors. I think it's going to be awesome. We've already picked out most of them. Um, just because I've been like super planning mode. <laughs> trying to get everything finished before everyone's booked up for the season of fall next year. Especially after COVID ruined so many weddings this year. Everyone had to reschedule. Um, a lot of people I reached out to were already booked for the day that we wanted and all that kind of stuff. So trying to get everything big finished all the vendors finalized and then we can worry about all the little stuff for the next couple months um but yeah i'm super excited and i'm super excited to take you guys along with me for the rest of this journey um i think my next video will probably be about my bridesmaids but don't hold me to that because i could be wrong um but yeah, so if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up as well as hit the subscribe button down below. Any other wedding series videos that you have that you want to see or just any videos in general, um, just leave them down in the comments, message me on Instagram, whatever you want to do. So yeah, make sure you subscribe down below as well as give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video.